on the show today. Egypt says its economy on tr right track after 5.6 percent growth in 2018 and 2019. Zambia Finance Minister urges quick implementation of austerity. Plus, Acacia seeks stay of international arbitration against Tanzania. Thank you for joining us and welcome to Business Incorporated. I'm Chimizi Obi. Well, we start off with the markets and uh, most of the major markets um, we track in Africa are pointing southwards at intraday. Now, here in Nigeria, the main index was 0.17% lower, while the GSE index in South Africa was down over half a percent. In Egypt, the EGX30 was also 0.54% in the red at intraday. The Nairobi All Share Index finished positive with a 0.13% gain on Tuesday. And in the Middle East, Saudi Arabia's stock index is on course for an eighth straight positive session as the main index gained at intraday. The index has been rising since EFGM's forecast profit for the kingdom's financial sector would grow 7.6% in the second quarter. In Abu Dhabi, the index rose 0.07%. While the Dubai index was 0.23% positive at intraday, Qatar's index advanced 0.22% also at about midday Nigerian time. While in Asia, stocks there mostly slipped today following overnight developments on the US China trade front. In mainland China, the Shanghai Composite closed 0.2% lower at 2,931.69, while the Shenzhen Composite also rose 0.16% to close at 1,574.35. Hong Kong's Hansen Index slipped 0.18% as of its final hour of trading. The Nikkei 225 in Japan fell 0.31%, to close at 21,469.18, with shares of index heavyweight and conglomerate soft bank group dropping 2.35%, while the topics ended its trading day slightly lower at 1,567.41. Over in South Korea, the KOSPI declined 0.91% to close at 2,072.92 while Australia's ASS 200 rose 0.49% to finish its trading day at 6,673.30. And in the U.S., stock index futures pointed to a higher open again in the morning after ending a lengthy winning streak following President Donald Trump's skeptical comments on the ongoing U.S.-China trade war. At around 5.50 a.m. Eastern Time, Dow Futures indicated a positive open of more than 40 points. The S&P 500 and Nasdaq were also seen moving higher. Trump on Tuesday said the world's two largest economies have a long way to go on trade and suggested that the U.S. could impose sanctions on an additional $325 billion worth of Chinese goods. The comments came just as uh, some... Washington and Beijing seek to restart negotiations on a trade deal after Trump and Chinese President Xi Jinping agreed not to escalate tensions, having slapped tariffs on billions of dollars worth of each other's imports over the past year. U.S. corporate earnings season is now in full gear. Wednesday sees a slew of major corporations reporting with Bank of America, IBM and Netflix all due before the bell. On the data front, weekly mortgage applications are expected out at um, 7 a.m. Eastern Time. Housing stocks figures uh, for June are due at 8.30 a.m. Eastern Time, while EIA crude oil stocks change data is set for release at 10.30 a.m. Eastern Time. Well, let's um, look at um, what's happening in South Africa back here on the African continent. The central banks uh, in sub-Saharan Africa's key economies will take direction from U.S. Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell when they make calls on interest rates in the next 10 days. South Africa Reserve Bank's Monetary Policy Committee will meet tomorrow 
for its rate setting, what should we expect? Well, let's talk to an economic analyst in South Africa, Sebo Kadima. Hello, Mr. Kadima. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you very much. Greetings to you and to the viewers of uh, Channels TV. Right. So tomorrow is South Africa's monetary policy meeting. What uh, do you see Leseja Kayago and his team, of course, doing at this meeting? Well, the MPC meeting tomorrow, I do not expect them to reduce interest rates. Uh, economists, of course, vary on this. There are those that believe that maybe the central bank should cut interest rates by 25 basis points to bring them to 6.5% from current 6.75%. But I think it would be a difficult call for the central bank governor, Lisecha Khanyao, to cut, to make a decision to cut rates, because we have to bear in mind that we currently have uh, high levels of debt, both in terms of consumer debt, as well as uh, the uh, government, which is running at a much larger uh, deficit, so, and, and, and highly borrowed. So I think the bond market would be affected negatively if the interest rate were to be cut, despite, notwithstanding the fact that there is a call to cut rates in the United States. But I think that the rates will remain the same in order, above all things, to try and arrest inflation because the central bank, which is South African Reserve Bank, has long taken a decision to use interest rates in order to bring inflation within the 6 to 3% uh, range, which has been uh, so for the last 15 years or so. Now, the latest available data indicates the economy remains weak after a 3.2% annualized decline in the first quarter, while inflation has come, to, uh, come in below the central bank's forecast. And of course, um, it's in the middle list of the target band of like 3% to 6%. Now, if the MPC decides to announce a cut, by how much are you expecting that cut to be? I can't see them uh, cutting to more than 25 basis points to bring the current levels of interest from 6.75 to 6.5. Uh, if they were to have, a, let's say, 50 basis points to bring it to 6.25, that would send a shock wave and most importantly will have a knock-on effect because we have to bear in mind that the consumer can't really borrow any more money uh, to be able to give impetus to the economic growth. And more so, m most of the companies that are here in South Africa are not in a position to really take advantage of a lower interest climate in order to increase on production uh, capacity. South Africa continues to suffer from a perennial trade deficit. And until we can get our manufacturing up, I can't see the consumer coming to the rescue of the economy in terms of growing this economy. Hence, I think that it would be prudent for the MPC tomorrow to actually keep the interest rates at the level that is currently at. But should they cut, they will not cut by more than 25 basis points, as I mentioned. Right now, the issue of expanding mandate of the Reserve Bank still lingers. How will this play out in the outcome of, of this meeting? Well, the issue of the mandate of the Reserve Bank, we have to bear in mind that it is the privilege of Parliament. So the Reserve Bank, and specifically the Reserve Bank Governor, Lesecha Khanyao, is on record on numerous occasions maintaining and defending that uh, the mandate of the South African Reserve Bank, as it currently stands, is appropriate for this country. There are those that differ, and I'm one of those that differ. And I differ on the basis that when one looks at, really, the mandate of the South African Reserve Bank is as originating from the 1920 Currency and Banking Act. So it is overdue for an overhaul to ensure that it can meet the needs of South Africa at this point in time, geoeconomically, geostrategically, and geopolitically. But the right. decision on whether or not to expand the mandate, we must bear in mind that it rests with Parliament and until Parliament effectively has that discussion, 
the, there is certainty in terms of the mandate of the Reserve Bank and will remain as so currently constituted. All right. Thank you for your time, um, Mr. Kedama. Much pleasure. Great pleasure to be here. All right. All right, let's now take a quick peep into Europe where stocks were muted early in Wednesday's session as comments from U.S. President Donald Trump reignited fears over trade. What President Trump says, the U.S. and China still have a long way to go on trade. Of course, earnings are also in focus with a slew of corporate results set to be released. G7 finance ministers will meet to discuss trade tensions and France's digital tax. Let's bring in Daniel now to look at these and more. Hello, Daniel. Good afternoon. Good afternoon to you, Timmy, as well. Our U.S. President Donald Trump has been making comments about the trade war between the U.S. and China, and um, for shares have been reacting. What can you tell us more? Yeah, Timmy, well, investors were actually kind of hopeful after the G20 summit which was taking place just a few weeks ago there in Osaka. U.S. President Donald Trump was meeting there with his uh, Chinese uh, counterpart, and they agreed to continue their negotiations and talks, and that for the moment um, those potential new terrors uh, actually would be um, off the table. But now Donald Trump was making a statement yesterday there at the White House um, to reporters, and he was uh, saying that he thinks uh, that it's still going to be a long way until a final uh, agreement between the U.S. and China will be reached. And all of this is now making investors, mostly in Asia, a little bit uh, depressed uh, once again. And as a result, we saw that uh, shares there in uh, Asia have been uh, dropping uh, during, during the trading day. And you can see it in the background also the blue chip index DAX here in Frankfurt, uh, not really knowing in which direction to go. We started uh, in the red zone this morning. Let's actually have a look how shares are doing at the moment. We're still uh, in the red here at the moment, about 20 points down compared to the end of last day's trading day. So, yeah, you can feel the pressure there that uh, investors are feeling. They really want to have this uh, solution to be reached as soon as possible. All right, disappointing numbers coming from the car market. Figures released by the European Automobile Manufacturers Association show car sales dropped by 7.9% across the EU. That's the biggest fall since December. Why is this happening and what does this mean for Germany's big car makers? Yeah, exactly. Well, most of the car makers in Europe are suffering. Uh, it's not looking that bad right now for the German car makers. Uh, German car makers, their sales numbers were uh, went up by 0.5 percent. But of course, also this is uh, not a lot. Well, the official reason is actually, um, and that has to do mostly with the calendar, that there was pretty much just one day less uh, where car makers were able to sell cars. But I guess uh, this statistic kind of reflects the mood that car that car makers are feeling at the moment because they're not really going through easy times at the moment. Um, for example, when you talk about the e-mobility sector, car makers here in Europe are feeling uh, quite some pressures from the governments in order to get more e-cars on the road. But when you look, for example, around here in Frankfurt, I hardly see an e-car uh, on the road. They're still uh, very expensive, also not very attractive. When you talk, for example, about the range, uh, they can go. And also when you talk about the charging stations, mostly in rural areas, it will be very difficult even to find a charging station. So still lots of new money needs to be invested in this field. And also when you talk about the current economical sentiment that investors and um, also just the regular people are feeling at the moment uh, is not looking as good as it uh, was looking, uh, you know, some time ago. And of course, um, a car is for many people a very big investment. And it seems that they are a little bit reluctant at the moment. And also that is, of course, not really helping the car sales numbers at the moment. All right, Daniel, well, we'll leave it at that. So I know that some um, big changes are coming within the German government and, of course, uh, the EU Union. I'm sure we'll talk about it sometime tomorrow. Enjoy the rest of the day. We'll take a quick break, and when we come back, Egypt's economy grows 5.6% in the 2018-2019 fiscal year. Just stay with us.